it's time to craft something lucky. Hello friends, May Flom here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to take a plain tote bag, add some heat transfer vinyl, and create something one of a kind. So for this project, you will want some heat transfer vinyl. You could use glitter, you could use whatever type you like. You're also gonna want a blank tote bag. A zipper pouch would also work, a t-shirt could work, whatever material material you would like to transfer onto. And of course, you're going to want your scan and cut. So to start off with, I have my mat, placing it down here, and I printed out from the computer the letter L and then C-K-Y. I'm going to spell out lucky, but I have a horseshoe file I want to use for the U because I think that will be super cute. And I left some spaces between the L and the C-K-Y just to make my job easier to have one less thing to do, at least in my head, it made sense. It does not matter. You could in fact put it all together and then separate it once scanned. We're using the scan feature here on the scan and cut. And what that's going to actually do is it's actually going to allow us to create a cut file out of this printed. Now we could also use the converter tool that you can get free and use to convert fonts into scan and cut files. There's a lot of different ways to approach this. I am a very visual person, so having this printed out and thinking about it, and is this the right font, et cetera, et cetera, worked really well for me. As you can see, I have saved this to the machine, and now that is saved to the machine. That is why we did scan, not scan to cut, we went scan to make the file to create something out of it, not to cut directly out of the material, the printer paper that we had in there. So now I'm just gonna go to the bottom and get my file. And then what I am going to do here is I am going to select that little red box tool and not the L, but the other three. The reason is the inside of the Y would separate from the rest if they're not unified. So by clicking unify, I'm unifying everything and making it a little easier for me to work. Now I've got my USB there inserted and I know I happen to have this SVG file in here and yes, with our scan and cut, we can just have an SVG file that we just pull on in, which I will show you now as we get it up here. Got my horseshoe file and I don't actually want all of it. This particular file is in pieces, meaning I can take and change parts of it. It's not kept as a whole. So I'm just going to remove the pieces that I do not want by selecting them and hitting the garbage can. And I don't want that. So we're gonna just kind of pull that over here and then we're gonna click on that other one over there. Now, I don't, don't end up using the heart. So it, that is gonna go away, but I wasn't sure at this point. So right now what I'm doing is selecting the letters because if I want to size up, which I do, I click that unify button and I size up, it will size everything up at the same ratio. So I won't end up having like the L super big or the, the rest of the letters at a different size. This will keep it nice and even so that it's the same font size, up or down. And if I had put the horseshoe in there and added that as a part, it would keep that as well as the same ratio, the same size. So that's a really good tip for if you're trying to size up or down more than one item, unify them, and then you're really able to look at that. Now, if you ununify them, it pulls them back apart, which is great because maybe you don't want them to cut that way. It's just that you want to be able to see how everything is gonna fit together, how everything is gonna be sized, how is it gonna work or is it not gonna work and be able to make all of your adjustments right here on our scan and cut. So I have my horseshoe selected now and I'm sizing it up to make it make sense to me. And I also think, I was thinking about putting the heart in there and then I decided, no, I don't think I want the heart in there. So again, easy as can be, just collect, click on that garbage can icon to get rid of it. Now remember I was saying how I want to be able to put the letters close together and the horse shoe would be separate. I'm gonna do two different colors. I'm going to do the letters in green, the horseshoe in gold. Um, side note, as I scan this, I have it opposite. I, I, do fix the, I do fix this and make it so that the letters are on the green, the horseshoe's on the gold. Um, but that's one of those things as we go through, you know, as we go through and we're creating, we want to think about those things. We also want to make sure our heat transfer vinyl is transfer sheet down, iron on side up so that it 
cuts correctly. And knowing that, that means that whenever you cut heat transfer vinyl, you do need to go into object edit and this little mirror button, you're flipping your letters so that it's going to look reversed, but that's a good thing because then when we go and look at it, it will be in fact correct. Now you can see here half cut is on. That means the auto blade will cut half. The auto blade will cut only through the material, not through the transfer backing, which is a very good thing. Now, as this was cutting, I had the thought, well, I should go get the shamrock and cut a couple of those. I have this scrap of green. So that's what I'm doing here, going in and sizing. And then I am scanning my mat so I can see exactly what size and shape my piece is so I can see what will fit well or won't fit. And once this scans in, this is just another way that I really like utilizing that scanner. It really is helpful. Once it scans on in though, what we can do is pull these in, we can add more, we can resize them, and basically just get this to a place that you like. Now, if you don't want a shamrock, let's say you're not doing the word lucky, can you do other things? Of course, this could be hearts or stars or flowers or whatever shape you would like it to be. And you can see here, I can just size down and I like to make a couple different sizes just to see. Uh, I like to see a difference a lot of times. And you can put as many or as few on here as you like. As you can see, I'm very easily able to use a scrap. And we already know we have the half cut on, which is good. It means we can just click start. And we're on to assembly. So we are on weeding right now. And weeding means we're removing all of that vinyl, all of that heat transfer vinyl that we do not want to transfer. If we don't want this vinyl to be on our final project, we need to remove it so that when we do get out the iron, otherwise the iron will just, you know, the iron won't know which parts we do and don't want. The iron would just transfer it all. So using that pick tool, which is available for purchase separately, I am picking out all of the bits and pieces and moving them away, the pieces that we do not want. Ready to heat transfer, you're going to want to get out your iron, you're going to want some material to lay over it. And I also like to do a test, as you see here, laying out the pieces so that I can see which end I want to start with, so I can see if my design is going to work, if there's any alterations that I need to make before we actually get to permanently transferring this with our iron. Then we will figure out, okay, I would like this side or I would like that side and lay everything out. You can do this all at once or you can do it piece by piece. You're just going to want to make sure that all vinyl that you are trying to transfer is directly touching the surface, that none of that shiny transfer material is underneath any vinyl. Because if it is, it cannot transfer properly. If it is under, it just will, will not work because it would be transferring onto transfer material instead of onto your tote bag. So once you are all set, and ready to go. I'm going one side to the other. Press with your iron nice and firmly. And then once you're all done, you're going to lift up. Now, if for any reason it is not lifting up and it has not transferred, place your material back over and that's to help prevent from any singeing or burning of your material and try, try again. As you can see here, it's come off beautifully. Oh my gosh, I love this. And our final touch will be to get out those little shamrock accents that we made and put those on and then press again. And again, if you're going to iron this tote bag or whatever material you have, if you're going to iron it, you're going to want to put the material back over to prevent yourself from burning that heat transfer vinyl from too much heat and direct contact with your iron. As you can see, it's super fun and super easy to create with our Scan and Cut and to make custom giftables or just everyday items for ourselves with the Scan and Cut and with a little creativity. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. As you can see, it turned out super, super cute, so much fun, and I have got a lucky tote bag to head on out and go shopping with. I wish you very happy crafting. Be sure to subscribe to the Brother Crafts YouTube channel as well as staying tuned to the blog for more projects, ideas, and inspiration.